Hello, and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your processes, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design, just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Matthew Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How are things going today, Matt? Things are going well. Life is a bit hectic right now, but uh, all for good reasons. And uh, hopefully on October 31st, I have good news to share with everybody. So It's your birthday on October 31st. It is my birthday, but that's not the news. Double good news. And it's Halloween. Awesome. Well, uh, that's a teaser for a little while down the road, so we'll save that one. Um, Awesome. Well, we do have a word from today's sponsor, so check this out. And this particular sponsor, by the way, is is very important. Yes. It, make sure you stop down whatever you're doing right now and pay attention to this sponsor. Do you wake up in the middle of the night because you don't own official Admin Bar swag? Well, have we a surprise for you, announcing the official Admin Bar swag shop. If you, too, need more amounts of tab in your life, the Admin Bar swag shop can help you gain a fresh new look. Let just one person among thousands of people tell you about the amazing benefits they gained from wearing official Admin Bar gear. I was feeling tired. My wife heard about official tab swag on the radio. After taking it, I feel full of pep. Yes, folks, so confident are we that the official tab swag shop can help you. That if you aren't getting enough tab in your life, we offer you this guarantee. Order just one of our fine products today, and within just one week, you'll feel stronger, peppier, in seven days, more vital and alive. You have nothing to lose, everything to gain. Order your tab swag today. I definitely think you should have this website pulled up and and at hand so you can check out what we're uh, what we're talking about today. So I reached out to Chris on a recommendation from Mike Sell in a thread where we were kind of sharing everybody's favorite agency websites and Design Rangers website was mentioned in there. And as I opened up all these websites, uh, agency websites and in, in a bunch of browser tabs and was kind of just cycling through them really quick, all of a sudden there was this one that just completely stood out as something uh unique and different and unlike any of the rest of them I was looking at. So I definitely wanted to reach out to them and find out, you know, kind of how they developed this unique brand and how having such a unique identity has positioned themselves in their market. So let's go ahead and jump into the conversation. All right. So why don't y'all start this off by introducing yourself a little bit. Tell us, uh, you know, a little bit about yourself and how you guys got started in the business. Christopher, why don't we start with you? Yeah, sure. So, um, Chris and Jenny, we own the Design Rangers. We, it's a, a marketing and creative strategy firm that we've owned now for 13 years? 12 years. 12 years? Okay. I, I, I get the numbers. After 10, it's like, I don't know. I think you just kids. call it a decade and it sounds better anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Over a decade of experience. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Jenny and I actually met in design school way back when in the 90s and uh, kind of lost track of each other, came back together, paid for our wedding with freelancing and uh, moonlighting. Eventually the moonlighting, I was a full-time art director at an ad agency and the moonlighting was um, turning out to be more profitable. And we were working every night and weekend and decided, hey, let's, let's go for this thing. And the main reason was actually because I was miserable at my job and um, we didn't want to show our then young kids that uh, being miserable and not going for your dream was worth it. So we started out on our own and uh, haven't looked back since then. And I feel like a lot of people watching and listening are probably shaking their heads like, yeah, no, I I hear that. Yeah, it was, I mean, it's been, we always say always an adventure and and, in the journey for sure. So we struck out like most um, freelancers with very little idea of what we were doing and kind of like, well, we know design, so that that's enough, right? Um, and actually, Jenny was the really smart one that one year we were um, going to go to a how conference. And Jenny said, you know, I think um, this money might be better, better spent going to a business consultant because I mm. think we got this design thing down, but I don't think we know how to run a business. That's, that's a smart move. I've always said that if I uh, if I ever went back to college, it would be for business. It wouldn't be for anything else. Yeah. 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 It's, I mean, it's just two completely different uh, mindsets. It's complete 
two completely different skill sets. I mean, it's, it's, I think that's where a lot of people struggle, especially, I mean, there's people that are super talented that end up really, really struggling with their business because they don't understand the business part of it. And it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's difficult, but it's nice when you have a, a team there and you guys can both put your heads together. That makes it easier too. Yeah. I think we're good at, you know, kind of reaching our breaking points at different times, which is, is good. And, and being able to identify that. If we're breaking um, down at the same time, it's a little rough. Yeah. yeah. Panic mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think, um, yeah, you know, on that, the business side of things, and I don't know if you want to talk about this, Jenny, but we definitely, I think the big shift for us was realizing that business could be creative and that really business is a design challenge. And so I don't know if you want to talk about our work just quickly with Peleg in terms of Yeah, we works. started seeing a um, kind of a business life coach um, out of California named Peleg Top. So he used to own a pretty successful ad agency in L.A., Uh, moved into more of like personal coaching, um, working specifically with creatives. So he really understands um, the kind of problems that creatives have and um, helped us work through like just because you own a business doesn't mean your your problems in your life don't reflect in your business. So Mm -hmm. if you have money problems, money issues in your personal life, of course, those are going to come through in your business as well. If you have you know, don't like confrontation in your personal life. That's not going to be any different when you're running your business. So we just, we learned a lot from him, um, spent about three pretty, maybe four months flying to California once a month to meet with him, spent a good chunk of money doing that. But um, we've always found that working with consultants has been um, well worth it. We've, we've learned a lot. And um, yeah, I don't think we would be where we are today if we hadn't had that kind of outside um, person helping us to kind of yeah steer this ship. Yeah, no, that, that totally makes sense. Um, I mean, since Kyle and I started like talking practically every day, um, I mean, I, I can definitely see that reflected in my business. And uh, like earlier on in, uh, in my career, I um, have you guys heard of SCORE? No. So SCORE, I think it's score.org. Um, mm-hmm. It's a uh, it's a free like coach basically they find somebody in your area that uh this this isn't sponsored by the way um <laughs> but no they find somebody in your area that has gone through uh or ran a business that's uh that's very similar to yours if like ideally exactly the same thing um and they partner you up with them and they're at this point retired and i think they they needed to have a, a business that grossed uh like over a million dollars annually um, so that, you know, they're successful and they coach you and they give you, you pointers and stuff. And the first one, uh, didn't go very well, but the second one was awesome. And I mean, I actually called him up like maybe a year after it was all done. And I was like, Hey, like, this is where I am. And he's like, that's fantastic. Like, there's nothing I can do. Like I can, I can give you other people that are like, they can bring you further, but, uh, man, it was, it was definitely well worth it. So I can, I can see. I can see the the benefit of that for sure. Yeah, investing in yourself, which is tricky, right? I mean, it's uh, something we tell our clients to do all the time, but when it comes to ourselves, it's tricky to set aside and be like, yeah, it's, but it's always paid off in spades. It's always scared us. And especially when we did the work with Peleg, it was, it was a significant amount of money and we weren't billing a ton at that point. Um, but it was a real change point. And I think for us, back to this idea of designing your life, look, it's, don't look at it as sales. Don't look at it as marketing. Don't look at it as business. Look at it as here's a design challenge. What do I want for my life? What do I want for my business? Treat it like a client project. What's the challenge? How do you get to it? And, and that was a real shift for us in mindset. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, actually, a client of mine once told me, uh, don't ever think of money as money, um, especially when it's a business, you think of it as a tool. And ever since I've started doing that, it's a lot easier. I mean, it's still tough. It's still I mean, here we are uh, asking our clients like to drop, you know, five, 10 grand on a website. Would you do that for yourself and put, you know, Kyle and I actually had this conversation maybe like what, a, a week ago, Kyle? I forget what it was, but I was humming and hawing over purchasing something. And Kyle's like, well, you tell your clients to do this all the time. And like, <laughs> put that way, yeah, no, I mean, I, I should take my own advice type of thing. Like you do need to spend money on, on, your, on your business. 
Yeah, yeah. And I think this, this kind of brings us to a, a good point in this topic where I kind of, you know, the reason we had y'all on was uh, I, we had this thread going in the admin bar group where I, I was asking people for their favorite uh, agency websites. And it was just kind of to see what everybody really liked and see some cool ideas and get inspiration. And, and y'all's website was put into the, uh, the comments there. And I wasn't familiar with y'all. And of course, I'm going through all of them, checking them out. And, you know, a lot of them were, some of them were very beautiful, very nice, you know, but they're all, you know, we all have kind of agency websites. And then all of a sudden, there's this one that looked completely different. And everything on it was phrased differently. And, you know, it just, you know, in a thread with 100 different websites, it, it way stood out from all the others. Um, so I want, I'd like to dig into kind of how you guys came about to that. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that's not the first iteration of your, your presence. Uh, that's just my guess. Maybe you'll tell me I'm wrong, but, uh, was it through that the business coach where you kind of found this or, you know, again, this is just like what we were talking about. We tell our clients to do all these things all the time and then it's hard for us. And we tell our clients to differentiate themselves and then, you know, here, my logo is a rocket ship, like every other web design agency. <laughs> so, uh, tell me a little bit about how that got started and, and what kind of led y'all down this path. First, I have to tell you that our logo, speaking of logos, um, when we first started Design Rangers, you know, we were like, oh, I don't know. How about this logger font D? Yeah, that'll be good for like, you know, a year or something. And then we'll then we'll take the time and we'll really dig into it. And um, 12 years later, logger <laughs> D is still our logo. However, I'm proud to say we have a new brand rolling out probably by the end of the year. Um, so that's really exciting, but literally the same logger D low that was never even meant to be like a logo that was around for any amount of time. It, it was just, a placeholder. <laughs> placeholder logo has now been with us for 12 years. Wow. Yeah. And the website conversation isn't a lot different actually. Yeah. Well, the couple <laughs> kids don't get the shoes and I'm sure everyone can relate to that, right? We design lots of client sites, but it, it always takes us a long time to get to our own stuff. But <laughs> that's but the it, truth. Uh, <laughs> the but in terms of, you know, embracing it, I think a large part of it is our first, um, our actually like incorporated company name was Ding Dong Design, which was something that at the time our seven, eight year old son. Was, I think he was Three? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, he was young. See, I, again, the facts. You're not are the all... numbers person, are you? <laughs> uh, yeah. no, I do I'm all the, the billing. Don't no, worry, Chris. I'm does the not creative. Voice. <laughs> yeah. So when we when we learned that that wasn't a good name for us, we we sat down and and we really kind of talked about what 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 were we authentically? What really embraced us, right? And I think that especially now, because you talked about there's a million agency sites out there, the only thing that really differentiates you is your personality and who you are authentically, right? I mean, we all have good skills. We are all up on the latest kind of trends, ideas, technology. That's a given. Otherwise, you're not a player in the game. But I think a big portion of it is, well, what what who are you at your core and and what are those kind of personality traits and being vulnerable enough to put that out there and kind of being like, yeah, people might be like, this is stupid, but that doesn't matter because it's who we are. Mm -hmm. um, and so also, I think a Jeffrey Gittimer quote drove us quite a bit. Um, is that all things being equal, people want to work with their friends all things being not so equal, people still want to work with their friends. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we, we by nature are, you know, easygoing, friendly people who are not like when our business consultant first told me like, okay, you're, you're, you would be a great salesperson. Like you really should be in charge of sales. I'm like, Oh God, like I can't, I don't want to sell things to people. Um, but then reading that book and just learning like, no, I don't have to sell things. I just need to go out and make friends. Okay. I can go out and make new friends. But so I think it was just this idea of, we just wanted to be authentically us and, um, and hopefully we would attract the right people by doing that. Yeah. And we looked at our environment and we said, yeah, we're, we were both grew up in Colorado. Jenny's a Colorado native. I moved here when I was one. I can't call that status or natives get mad at me. But, Same um, Texas. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So, you know, we grew up, you know, near the mountains and, um, you know. I grew up without running water or electricity. Chris grew up, like, camping, his backpacking wow. nearly 
entire childhood. Yeah. So we kind of looked at that in terms of- We are of, Colorado to the core. Right. Colorado <laughs> to the core. We were looking at some tourism clients at the time, working with some tourism clients, but also this idea of, hey, we are we are steward. What, what are we to our clients? We are stewards of their brand. We are- the kind of rangers and we kind of went with that theme a little bit to go well where does that go because a big part of it was does this have legs right that was the thing dog design thing was like oh man we it was this whole ideas at your door thing and we ran out of room really quickly right so just like a client campaign we went wow where could we go with this does this have legs does this have something we could do um and once we kind of went yeah i think it does also the url was available let's let's that's helpful here. it was like designrangers.com was available we we're like okay that's it <laughs> Um, and it allowed me to get a, a Jeep as a corporate car. So, I mean, you know, I mean, there's fringe benefits too. Yeah. But I'm still saving up for the spaceship. I hadn't been able to pull that one off yet. Yeah. yeah SpaceX, <laughs> look out. Um, <laughs> so, I, but I think what was a big turning point for us was really embracing it. So, you know, I mean, we went out and bought Ranger outfits and, and took, you know, photos and did all of this kind of stuff. And once we really embraced it, kind of in a fun way, um, but also in a way that was, you know, our clients understood, it, it really did help us start to get the right kind of clients. It was like, look, if you thought this was dumb and didn't get this, we don't want to work with you anyway. Back exactly. Um, so do you have any stories of kind of uh, maybe realizing that you've turned a client off because of because of your branding or your unique positioning or, or clients that have really connected with you just because of that fact? Connected, yes. I, I don't no, maybe people have been kind enough not to tell us that we have turned them off with our s'mores and um, red socks and, you know. Or really they just don't contact it. you. Like there, there's right. that too. They hit the website and they're like, oh, what are these these weirdos? Right. But like you yeah. said, those are the ones you don't want anyway. Yeah. But we have a great story. I'll let Chris tell it about a, um, a prospective client coming to us. Yeah. Is this Kate the Wins? Yeah. So we, we had a client that... Um, Contact us out of blue. It's it's a, a, a big kind of um, local tourist attraction, caves, outdoor things, Cave of the Winds here uh, in Colorado. And out of the blue kind of contacted us, right? And this was earlier in, uh, in our business. And so at that time, it was usually we were getting referrals, word of mouth, that kind of thing. And we were like, wow, how did this guy find us? And um, basically when we met with him said, I love your brand and I want you to do for me exactly what you did for yourself. He's like everything about it, the way you talk about yourselves and the experience and what it is. Um, I, I want you to do that for me. That's the exact reason that I came to you. Um, you know, and it was pretty much verbatim that it was like, this is why I came to you because what I see on your site is embracing who you are, what's different. And it spoke to me as a kind of an outdoor attraction in terms of, the adventure and that side of things. And so I think it was, it was huge for us to be validated in that sense, right? Because I think we were taking a little, we felt like we were taking a risk. I mean, I think that's the other thing is sometimes we feel like we're taking these huge risks and they're not really that big of risks at all, especially if it's authentic. Um, but he was 100%. And at that time, that was the biggest contract we had ever won. I mean, it was the first time we did a paid discovery session with somebody, all of those kind of things that, that made us super nervous, but our brand was really part of that. Um, and I think to this day, I mean, we have clients now who, when we talk about our new brand, we've been revealing little bits and pieces of it over time and, and clients are like, oh my God, are you guys going to have, you're going to have badges or patches? Do I get to earn those? Do I get to be part of this? And, and what we've learned is most of our clients, right? Their day to day is work and, and potentially cubicles and offices and boards and these things. And when they get to come work with us and they get to feel like they're a part of something productive and fun mm -hmm. and they're in like i said when jenny said i mean they get to earn their red socks at some point right after a project they get to go through a camp with us and and kind of go through what that experience is they get to come to a meeting and have s'mores and while that seems so kind of like okay um <laughs> they love it i mean they just they love everything about it now we have to deliver the work right if we weren't delivering great work it wouldn't matter, but I right. all the s'mores in the world doesn't matter. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you'd have to get into a pretty high sugar coma there to overcome that. But, but I think this point of again, they, they come to us and they feel like, yeah, hey, you guys are real people, and I get to be part of something fun, interesting, bigger to myself. And there's a little bit of gamification to it, honestly, too. It's mm -hmm. this idea of 
like, okay, I, I get to go along and, and earn these things. So it's an adventure. I mean, it's it's already an adventure, and it's like you know, it's an adventure and a risk, regardless. But adding the fun to the adventure, like, kind of helps like mitigate that that feeling of risk in a way. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think people can feel less afraid of the adventure when they know that you know, we are kind of leading the way. We're at the, you know, we're the Rangers. We mm-hmm. got gotcha. you. Right. Like, you know, you don't have to be scared. We're here to, to go on this journey with you. So. And and that's the thing you, you can so much separate yourself in, in, in one fact. And it's something we all have. We all can be ourselves and nobody else can be us. Everybody else. I mean, somebody else could have a, a, a camping theme web design website, but they're not going to be you. You know, so when you can be authentically you, you, you automatically differentiate, differentiate yourself from all the competition because nobody can do that. Um, and, and I imagine, you know, you, just like you stood out in the thread that, that we had, I imagine, and like the customer that came to you for that reason, you stand out to all your clients, like people aren't going to forget you when they see you, they're going to remember you because of that. Yeah. And, and sometimes even that, you know, idea of they may not work with us now. We had one nonprofit who saved up their money for years and years and years to work with us because they had heard us speak at a nonprofit event. And, and they, again, they remember it. it's not like they're like, well, who are those people? It's like, oh, yeah, those are those people in the Ranger hats that, you know, did this thing. And I think that ability to. We've literally shown up to talks, luncheons wearing Ranger uniforms. <laughs> Like, Although we've learned you can't do the real thing. We were going to borrow some and they're like, no, that's a that's federal offense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, don't, don't land but, in prison. <laughs> yeah. So we, we've had to be careful with that. But, but you know, I, I, as you said, I think, you know, the idea of you can't replicate who you are, right? That personality so many times because I've done this, right? Agencies spend all their time looking at other agency sites, which is great for inspiration, but then everybody sounds the same because everybody looks at each other and just copies each other to some degree and puts their own spin on it. And our kind of advice to clients and ourselves is always like, okay, go look what's out there so you understand, but then look inside. Look at who you are. We go through personality camps and exercises with our clients to find, well, who is that authentic you that you've forgotten? And um, you mentioned writing too. You know, We're big proponents of good copywriting, right? This idea that we've all been taught to write research papers, which means we all want to sound professional and get the buzzwords out there. And if if you were to read that stuff out loud, or if you were to meet somebody at a cocktail party and they read their website, you would be, wow, this is the most boring person I've ever met. Or incredibly pretentious. (laughs) Right, right. And so that's the way we say, hey, look, if if your website was someone you met at a cocktail party, what would that personality be? Is that someone you want to hang out with? Someone that you're excited to be around? And and that's a real mind shift for people, right? Because everyone's like, well, no, but it doesn't say like, you know, um, cutting edge, leading, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, yeah, that's that means nothing anymore. Um, so I think that marriage of copy and image and personality for us has been you know, a critical component to, to not only our success, but our client success as well. Yeah. And your uh, your hero it pretty much sums that up to a T. I mean, it's uh, your 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 heading is storytelling by design. Like that's that's exactly what you just said. We believe on, it on brand. Absolutely. Good job. Always. <laughs> and how can you be off yeah, brand no. if it's if it's you, you know, like, yeah. that also helps too. like if you are authentic and you're not trying to like, you know, quote unquote, fake it until you make it type of thing. And, and you do just resolve to be you in your business when you show up to a meeting, like, I'm sure that helps with nerves. And and like those like, you know, the first time you meet a potential client, that uh, that jittery feeling because you, you're not putting on a mask, you're just sitting down and, and having a conversation rather than trying to sell. And that's right. well, uh, yeah, really, really just trying to get to know people. Again, you're just I'm um... We're just trying to to make friends. And, right. you know, we love to work with people that we're friends with. And we turn away tons of business if it's not the right fit. I mean, we, we refer to out a lot of business if people aren't, you know, if we don't think we can do a good job for them or we don't think they're the right type of fit for the kind of work we do. Um, and again, that kind of honesty is, is for a lot of people refreshing. You know, it is refreshing for them to sit down and be like, you're not trying to sell me something. You're just trying to understand me and you're just trying to talk to about who I am um, you know you talked about standing out we always talk to people about yeah you want to be the orange in the apple basket how do you 
how when they, people get a bunch of proposals in front of them and they all look the same and they all and, and have a variety of numbers, right? For a website, it's going to be, okay, here's the $3,000 option. Here's the $50,000 option and everything in between. Clients can't sift through that in any kind of meaningful way except to go, who, who do I trust and who do I get that like, yeah, but these people feel a little bit different than this. Um, and the same thing, we've, we feel like our brand and the way we approach things recently has helped us win a contract where we were four times, three times the, the amount of the, the other competitor they were looking at. Four times. Yeah, four times the amount for a website. And we got the business. And I think that's a testament to just being able to be like, yeah, but this is what we do and this is the way we do it. If you want that, let's go for this ride. Let's have fun. Let's get the s'mores fired up. If you don't, you should totally go for the other company that is a quarter of the cost. Um, so, yeah, I mean, our brand, it's, it's, it's something we feel like we've been able to now lean on and leverage a lot. Yeah, yeah it gives you, gives you that flexibility. When you, when you mentioned, you know, turning away business, like I know a lot of people like when they hear that, they, they think, oh, turning away money. But really, if you know who you are and you know what kind of clients you want to work with, you're not turning away money. You're, you're turning away stress and headaches and you're opening up time for, you know, the other clients that you currently have and you're opening up time for new clients that do fit and mesh well with you. You know, so yeah. it's definitely it's important not to think like, oh, every job is, you know, money. No, it's every job is is potentially a new awesome relationship. And that's that that stands f far longer than uh, than anything else, you know. Yeah. And we always say we're a luxury to be able to do that, right? In the early days, yeah, we had to pay the bills and it was like yeah, we got to take most of what comes at us. So I understand the reality of that early on, but the sooner you can trust yourself to say, yeah, if I, if I close this door, usually another one opens, mm -hmm. right? And if I'm, if I'm going to be stuck in a project that is going to take way too much time, money, energy, and is not going to be fun, I'm not going to have the, the bandwidth to take on something else that probably fits the bill. Um, and again, we've also just, same thing, we've built lots of great relationships that way. Right. And I think you bring up a good point in that, like, you know, in the beginning, you do take everything you possibly can because you have to. And like, you know, be that a year, three years, however long you're doing that, it becomes the, the norm. And to every business goes or should or th should think about going through that shift. But that shift is incredibly difficult because you've spent the last however many years agreeing to everything that comes your way. And that that moment that you're you know, you're, you're contemplating it, it's, it's really difficult to do. And I mean, for myself, when I started to, to really like think about who I wanted to work with, and, and what types of businesses, and I did start saying no, I started making way more money. You know, mm -hmm. and it's, 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 it's definitely a, a mind shift, but it's difficult to do. Yeah, so let, let's talk uh, before we wrap this up. I know we're we're going to start running up against time here, but I do want to I want to give people some actionable advice so they can kind of take some of these these wins you've had and figure out how to implement it into their own business. So I think a lot of people uh, that are in our group and, and listen to this podcast are kind of in that position still where uh, you know you're having to take on probably jobs you wouldn't you know, prefer to take on or, or your business is young enough that you haven't exactly found where you want to be yet. And I find myself in that position, like, uh, you know, choosing a niche or this or that. And it, it's, I'm like, man, I feel like I'm almost still too young to like make this life decision for myself. It's like telling your, your, your young kid to decide what they want to do, you know, growing up, well, they need to figure it out. Still, you kind of got to go through that growth process. So as part of that evolution and that growth, what things should people be looking for to say, Hey, that might be something that would be right for me? Or, or what are some of those cues that they could be looking for? We really, in the beginning, um, thought that we wanted to work kind of solely with the outdoor tourism kind of space um, within Colorado. And there, there there's a lot oh, yeah. of those clients. Um, I think what we found quickly is it doesn't matter what space you're in, there's still jerks. Um, and so just because we were working with these like outdoor tourism recreation businesses didn't mean that it was all, all fun. So really our, our niche is now that we don't work with jerks. Yeah, that's our number one rule. We don't work with jerks. And we tell, we, we will literally say that in client meetings when we first work with people. Hey, our number one rule is we don't work with jerks. And, and, and our meetings, a lot of times that's what we're really trying to figure out how difficult are these people going to be to work with? 
it's so, kind of like so, the the dating dance in a way. Right. Yeah. Right. Because we're going to be yeah we're going to be in a relationship. Sometimes it's only for a couple months. Sometimes it's for seven, eight years. We have clients that we've had for that long. Like that's a long time to be hanging out with somebody that you don't really like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, what's actionable there is pay attention to the things that, that really give you that like, oh yeah, I like this. So for us, it was like, wow, we like working with really great people. The industry actually isn't nearly as important, right? We thought the same thing, niche, oh, we got a niche and it's this industry and that's what's important. But then we go, you know, what really felt great is at the end of projects when we're all, high-fiving and excited and they're passionate about things and we're like well why don't we build our business around that right so sometimes it's taking the advice you hear out there but also paying attention to what what makes you feel good what you like not just what somebody else or some expert tells you is the way to do things and um back to Pele one of the things he told us was stop to celebrate your successes so whenever you have a project that goes well stop for a minute just for a minute and be like okay that was good what what did I like about because so often we're moving so quickly that we don't stop to kind of go, well, wow, what worked there? And vice versa, if something didn't work, kind of go, wow, what, what didn't work there? What's the pattern here that I either need to break or stop or I need to stop taking these kind of clients? But back to that looking inside, I think it's kind of what gets you excited and, and work more on that. Um, and when you talk about making that life decision, I'll tell you now, you can shift pretty quickly on things. So that's the other thing that for us was a big thing was just see everything as a series of tests mm -hmm. and you can always pivot and move, right? Because I think we got that, oh my God, we're going to make this decision and for the rest of our lives, we have to, it's just like telling our kids that they're going to switch careers five times probably in their lifetime, <laughs> you know, be good at the things that, that excite you and have a passion for learning and test things out and see how it goes. Yeah, and I'm glad you kind of brought that up about niches too. And and I'll I'll butcher the way it's explained, so I won't go into it too far. But everybody should check out kind of uh, Mike Killen does lots of teaching on niches, and you can go to sellyourservice.co.uk and he just search for niche on there. You'll find like a thousand blogs. But you know he talks about your a niche isn't an industry. Like you don't have to say I only work with you know whatever industry. You know the niche is the people you serve, uh, and you kind of create a niche out of those clients you can best serve and, and that makes you have a unique niche when you can kind of really narrow those things down so i think you're echoing those points uh, i don't know if you follow mike killing around like i do but uh, uh i think you echo those po points pretty well yeah yeah no mike yeah I've, I've followed mike stuff and a lot of people and we're actually yeah working with with some of that crew that mike's a part of with some 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 new consulting stuff that we're doing investing in ourselves um but yeah i mean i think I think it is that idea of, like you said, it's it's taking what you hear out there from all of these experts and things and then going, okay, now what does that mean to me? Because I think for a while it's so it's so easy to just try to copy someone else's path, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, okay, I hear somebody saying, choose a niche and do this thing and do this. That's all I need to do. And sometimes you can head down that path and go, this doesn't feel right to me. That's right for that person, um, but not for me. So it's it's... It's always, you know, I don't know if you follow Troy Dean too, but he would always say, say he's into taste. He's from Australia. And that would be his he's thing. He's actually is, from Australia. Is hear that <laughs> advice and then take it and make it yours, right? And I think that's the way we've always approached business and life advice is like, okay, I hear the lesson here. What does that mean to me? Not just take it verbatim and try to apply it. Absolutely. I think that I think that's a pretty good place to, to wrap up our conversation here for sure. Uh, so let me ask you before we go, uh, I'm sure there's going to be people be people in our group who aren't familiar with y'all yet. What's the best way for them to kind of follow along and see the things you're doing and, and get to know more about you? How can people connect with y'all? Um, well, we're on Facebook, Design Rangers on Facebook, Design Rangers on Instagram. Um, you know, shoot us an email. Hello at designrangers.com. Uh, yeah, check out our website. Um, yeah, or just, you know, if you really want to be friends, just find us on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> or just show up in Colorado. It's cool. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you can keep an, an eye out for our, our, our hashtag, which is be a ranger or bear anger. It's the same, same spelling. So it just depends on the day. Sometimes we're in bear anger and sometimes we're in be a ranger land. Um, nice. I like, I like it. That, that is <laughs> What's the greatest? Greatest accident, greatest that accident ever, yeah. or realization that ever happened. Bob Ross would call it a happy accident. We're like, hey. I'm like, oh a, crap, I misspelled be a ranger. It says bear anger. Wait a <laughs> second. 
seconds. You're reminding me of the things that are legal in Colorado that aren't legal here in Texas yet. <laughs> you can come to Colorado for that reason as well. <laughs> awesome. Well, we really appreciate y'all coming on and sharing with us today. And I think, uh, I think I've already took a lot of things that I need to go put into action right away from this conversation. So I hope other people do too as well. Matt, do you have anything to add to this conversation before we wrap it up? No, I think, uh, I think this is great. This is, this is really well done. Awesome. Well, thank you all again so much for joining us. And as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to share our content, like, and subscribe to our channel and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time and it greatly helps support the show. We'll see y'all on the next episode.